Welcome to Ghost Watch 2016. This is a podcast where we're watching Common Rider Ghost. My name is Coriander Dickinson, and I've seen a bunch of Common Rider. My name is Hello Deary. I've seen some Common Riders and Rider Commons. My name's Kate Stark. I thought we were talking about Sentai. Right, so we're on episode 17. Dazzling, Dazzling the, the Ethereal, ethereal queen. queen. On last week's episode, Necrom transformed. We had a dub quadcopter, and Akari did science. Unexpected. Yeah, but she did a lot more science than normal. She did more science in this episode, but we'll get to that. Maybe she'll do science again in the future. Or will she? Spoilers! Whoa! <laughs> So they added Decrom to the opening. Yeah. <laughs> We're so good at podcasts. Him and his stupid fish mask. His, I don't know. There were two of him. There were... Was there not two of him? Yes, because there's the, his costume. Grim. The Grim Necrom? Necrom? <laughs> ne- the Grim, Grim Necrom. <laughs> That's a new dance move. It's All, all the kids are doing it. Yo, you want to do the Grim Necrom with me? No, I'm still on Stanky Leg. <laughs> what is Stanky Leg? I, I, I think I, I'm just going to stay away from dancing and the two of you while you're doing it. I whipped once and then I nay-nayed. People watched it. I don't know what you're talking about. You're all very weird now. Soldier Boy. Dance. Dance. We're saying pop culture references. Right? We're not old. Snapchat. Insta stories. I I haven't heard of that one. Yeah, Instagram Instagram got stories. Instagram took Snapchat stories. I mean, copied, really, honestly. They copy cats. They copy snaps. Hmm. Why can't go for ginger snaps? They sent me an email about it podcast canceled we're getting cookies now goodbye bye thanks for listening follow us on twitter or snap apple so there's 73 days left and it's raining man it's hella raining and it's, and it's foggy. dark purple foggy dark rain and there's a lady with a red umbrella walking down a street and a figure <laughs> it's a ganma <laughs> Spoilers. I, well, first off, he. It's not really secret because the Ganma shouts his name. Jack, 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 Jack knife. knife! You really he, like it when we say things at the same time, don't I you? I do. <laughs> yeah. So we've got a knife based Ganma that is clearly like Jack the Ripper and uses a lot of knife and cutting puns. Well, because he talks about how, oh, there's a girl here going to get her soul cut. <laughs> So to explain what happened... None of those things is a pun. No. <laughs> to, ex- Hodor. to explain what happened, well, because you know, Hodor he... did not explain it at all. Wait, is that my job now? No, I was setting it up for Corey. Okay, I, I was going to give an example of a pun. Like, at one point he leaves, and he's like, time to cut out of here. I didn't see that one. I saw one of the others. I didn't see that one. He was of... constantly making puns. Look, the only pun I saw him like say nice was that to meet you was was have a knife day. <laughs> have a knife day. Did I miss all of these? I'm going to say yes. God, I must have been taking some vigorous notes. It's it's hard to keep up with reading subtitles and writing notes. I only caught the one pun. I didn't realize there were multiples. The Ganma cuts the woman. The woman falls over. She's not actually cut. It was more a cut of her soul. Yeah. Like, she's not physically damaged. Just her soul has been taken out of her body. And then we move the camera further away, and there's another woman watching and being all creepy-like. Yeah, she's got, like, a Japanese umbrella. It looks like maybe one of the paper ones, though. Some kind of don't think that's very useful in actual rain. But I don't know. That is true. She should not be using that umbrella in that weather. She might be on a rooftop. She looks like she's higher up. And I think doing, she is on a walkway. Let's not judge thing. people on their umbrella choices here, folks. 
I wasn't judging her on her umbrella choices. You her umbrella exactly choices were. are wrong. I was judging the 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 evil thing by the close up face camera angle. She's clearly on a building like every bad guy seems to like doing. I don't think she's evil. She was just there and being creepy. You just be because creepy. people are creepy doesn't mean they're evil. I'm not evil, but I'm creepy as hell. Yeah, look at you. All hooded up. I am actually wearing a hood and I'm kind of hiding behind my chair and staring at Corey and Heather. I look creepy as hell right now. It's true. And Kate's probably not evil. <laughs> okay. How do we test for that? Is there a science we can we, we can do montage? That's spoilers for later. Can we do an audio montage of science to Kate? So hey, we're back in the lab and Akari is doing science. Looking for the weakness in the material of the icon shrapnel that she found last time. She drops some like green stuff on it and then goes, <gasps> Does this mean? And we cut to Inari screaming and swinging his monk staff and then spinning around and swinging it and yelling a little bit more. And I think he's got a headband on, even though he doesn't have hair and he's probably not sweating because he is exerting himself, but not that much. But it just goes to show how hard he's training. Yeah, Taco Time walks in and is like, oh, you look like you're training really hard. And he's all like, Taco Time, I didn't see you there. I'm just trying to be useful because I'm not sciencey, like some science people who are good at science. Speaking of science, Akari runs screaming from the lab and falls right in front of Taco and Onari. And she has an excellent yellow sweater on. It's really good. It's like a mustard. Yeah. It's a good sweater. I do like that sweater. She has like a Peter Pan collar with like little jewels on it too. I noticed yeah. that. she's She dresses pretty cute most of the time. She's very freaked out because someone is here, which is not what I thought she was going to be. Yeah, I thought she about. was going to discover something. But no, there's a woman in the meeting area. Dancing. And humming. And looking kawaii as... It's covered in flowers. Maho as hell. And she can see the future. <laughs> Who taught you the words kawaii and maho? <laughs> My best friend Jamie. Should should we tell Kate about the other s- word that's similar to kawaii? <sighs> it means creepy. Which? Kawaii. Oh, I thought if kawaii, you, if kawaii means ka. creepy. I mean cute. Ko- kawaii. Kawaii. Yeah, so it's the same sounding word, but it's ko instead of ka. Kowai is yeah. creepy and Kowai yeah. is cute. Yeah. And Maho is magical. Yeah. Yeah. She looked Maho as hell. She did. Thank you. And Shoujo. Also important. What does that mean? Girl? Girl. She was a Maho Shoujo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not a Jojo, but a Shoujo. I said Shoujo. Not a Jojo. Yeah. Not even a little. Although she does a little bit of JoJoing here. Uh, Kawaii Maho Shoujo. You got it. A yeah. cute, magical girl. Yes. Sweet. So she's in the main room. She's dancing around. And then Taku speaks to her. And she goes, I can see the future. Help me. She seems really distressed about the whole situation. And then she faints. And everyone's like, oh, no. Oh, Taco time is like, I go, I'll grab some water, and Onori and Kari just start fighting. They've they've seen the stuff on the news, and they're like, oh yes, this is a thing. Five women have been victims, and fog, and arguing about whether or not future seeing is real. And we cut to the other room where Canon and Makoto are, because Makoto got all wrecked and is in bed, but this wakes him up, and he's all like, what's going on in there? And then it comes back to the room with Taco arriving with water. Which gets knocked out of his hands because a uh, lady wakes up and kind of hits it out. I'm going to name her Future Sight. Ooh. Future Sight. That's Future Sight wakes up abruptly as, as soon as the water is available. And is all like, I know what time and place things are happening. And the Newton icon freaks out and flies away. And then Taco runs promptly after it. Like it was in his shirt and then it just flew away for no reason. And everyone's like, I've never seen that happen before. And the woman's just standing there like nothing happened. The woman, Future Sight, 
That's her name? Yeah. Future Sight then says, the victim is a woman with a red bag. And gives, like, a time and a place. In 30 minutes, under the Toyo underpass. And then she faints again. Taco... Oh, God. Taco arrives at a park. That's the best scene ever. Newton Icon is on a, a swing. Swinging by himself. Yeah. Just sitting there in the middle of this this plastic swing and Taco goes to grab him and it gets like these little surprised effects. These little um like, like panic. sweat mark drawing yeah. things and it tries to run away but Taco grabs him. He's just like, what's into you? And I'm like, you just want to be on a swing. Look at Icon. Icon's clearly like swings. I don't know how the icon stuck to the swing, though. Really, really should have gotten into a bucket seat. Gravity is Newton. Don't science me. We are Akari now. <laughs> we are me. Akari and Onari running with spider lantern towards an underpass that is full of mysterious purple fog. We run in and we find a passed out girl. And by we, I mean the characters in the show, because that's still what we're recapping. We got knifed. A blue soul spear flies out of our body. Wait, are we everyone now? No. Maybe we shouldn't be everyone. No. It's confusing. I was going back into not the third person. Well, Nari is person. really, really excited because the time and the location, everything was correct. And he's like, yeah, clearly a believer in future sight. But Akari is just kind of like, no, this can't, this can't be right. This is not possible. I am science. It is not science. And the blue soul sphere flies away from the underpass and they chase after it and it goes inside of like this softball sized silver sphere thing that's on a chain attached to a neck of a human man who's Who we wearing have, goggles. We have dubbed Steampunk Man. For obvious reasons. He's wearing like a military uniform and it's got like gold rope on it and he's got these goggles and one of them looks like a colander and the he other looks, one looks like an aiming reticle. He looks steampunk as hell. He's got gloves. They don't look like goggles you could actually see things through. Oh hell no. Like, They're for these, ghost magic. These these are these are not these are not He's just good. captured a woman's soul. Yeah, but they're not in the goggles. The normal rules don't apply. Did they ever apply to this show? No. Okay, good. Just checking. And here you are criticizing a man's goggles. I'm he just, just wants to steampunk today. I'm just saying, if you wanted to cosplay Mr. Steampunk, you really may have some visual problems. Cosplay safety is important. So Steampunk Man has a soul in his little ball and says that he wants to determine the soul's purity. Yep. And then what happens? Then Akari and Anari are like, no, you can't do that. And Steampunk is all like, knife Ganma, kill them. Okay. And the knife Ganma emerges from the fog and we get a clear view of it. Of <laughs> Even though we don't want to. No, no. <laughs> this was a weird one. It was kind of steampunky. The clear view is not helpful in trying to figure out how to describe this thing. The, the, the major colors are red, black, and bronze, I would say. right? And silver. Metal. Yeah, because there's scissors on it. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of scissors. It has a top hat. A really tall top hat, though. It's a top hat that has, like, red lines on half of it and maybe an eye on half of it. It's the, very stylized. The fringe on, like, his shoulder pads were scissors, and then there were scissors in holsters around his waist. And then he had, like, a steampunky backpacky engine type thingy yeah that had arms that were attached to scythe things that looked like they had bone handles like giant blades with yeah the handles that he could hold and then his face was like brown and red well, he had, had a stupid mask attached to yeah, the hat yeah he had this mask that i think it looks like shape. the kill out kill scissor blade but it's that color, kind but it's like it's it has on one like side nice it's like thing. a J and the other side it's like a beak. It kind of reminded me of um the armor plating you see on like knights' helmets where it's got the grid eye holes. Yeah, yeah. But but really weirdly stylized and bad going somewhere that I have no idea what they were trying to do. It's got some sort of grey honeycomb foam thing on his chest. 
And he had like really long jacket and boots. I didn't like this it one. It was also striped. This was bad. Was I didn't weird. like him. Yeah, I, I like the green Gonma that we can't describe over this one. With the weird beard mustache yeah. trunk? With yeah, the, I like yeah. that one more. With the dragon elephant head, yeah. Remember the one that was the bee? I remember the yeah, bee. Yeah, the bee was pretty Why pretty are good. all the lady Gonma pink? We'll get to that. Ladies. So Inari steps up, ties up his sleeves... Because he's going to take this thing on. Oh man, he's going to fight so hard. He's, he's been, been training. Trained. Training so hard. He he wants to show this Gamma the fruits of his labors. So he takes a swipe at it, and it cuts his staff. And he's all like, that was expensive. Yeah, yeah Onari yeah. was pretty bummed about th- the whole thing. It was kind of cute. Who wants to describe the thing that we all don't no, like? No, no, we can skip over it. It never happened. It cuts his face. It reminds me lot. of that poster. Yeah, the uh, I've got the we've got the uh, Abby Howard scary clown. Yeah, yeah. Print. Okay. Okay. So it was like a close up on Onari's face, but his eyes were bulging like cartoons, and it was kind of like the camera was glitching around a bit, and then cuts were appearing on his face. So it kind of gave the impression that Jack Jackknife was slicing his face a bunch. Like a lot. And his, it was like, like a close-up on his face. I would say longer than that, like yeah. 10 solid seconds of well, this. Well, because it, it cut back from that to the Ganma and then back again, and it was just really uncomfortable. And All of us like buried our hands in our, or our face in our hands because we just weren't okay with this. It was not okay. Spectre showed up. He transformed. I was thinking his, his transformation might not work. Oh, I know, because he was he's injured. So busted. He's hella broke. But his his jacket does a really good, really good punch to jackknife, hmm. and then and then actually just settles onto him. And steampunk man was just like chilling by a tree and just goes casually. Mm, guess that's Spectre. I mean, at least he seems informed. Uh, we cut back to Snapple HQ, where Taco Time walks into the room past the table. And then the lady just floats down. She floated down from the ceiling onto the middle of the table. It was hella weird. And then Newton flew away again. She's all like, do you have faith in the power of man? And Taco's all like, uh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I'm Taco time. I believe in people. I'm all about that. Uh, yeah. And then Cannon runs in and is like, my brother's gone. Where could he be? Taco Time runs down to try and grab Newton because uh, Newton flies down into the lab, catches him, trips into the ground, and then we see Gramps. Okay, yo, Gramps is dressed as Princess Leia for real. It's not, not quite actually, but not like quite. He was, he's got like some Amidala hair going. He's kind of dressed as Princess Leia though. He's wearing like a white kind of robe thing tied around the waist and, and the, the ankles legs. and the wrists. And the arms. And then he has, like, two kind of bun things on the side of his head. And I seriously thought they were going for, like, stylized Leia. I was like, how does this fit in at all? He's talking about the Yamatai nation and the queen. The woman who could hear the voice of the gods. And my favorite subtitles. Queenie, queen, queen. Yeah, Yeah, queenie, queen, queen, queen. And Taco's all like, oh, you mean... And then he, like, looks around for his book of heroes, and then Gramps is all like, here it is. They've already got it open to the page you need. You mean? Himiko. Himiko. And then we got some facts about Himiko. Not really great facts. The facts were, brought the feuding nations of Japan together. Legendary queen of Yamatai Nation. Yeah. Super helpful fact. uh, The only other information I can give you is that she's also called Pimiko. Yeah. And she's from like around the year 200. Oh, she old is. Yeah, yeah, super old. Yeah, I tried looking it up on Wikipedia and it was just like, yeah, books about Japanese history have skipped her. People fight about where she comes from and if she, who she is. So no one really knows. She shows up in more Chinese literature than in Japanese for some reason. Interesting. So don't know what that's about. Don't really know anything about this one. At this point, your ascent shows up. Well, Cannon comes downstairs following Taco Time, and then Gramps tr- runs away to try to hide yeah. for some reason, and runs into a pole, because there's a loft and that he lives under, and he just rams right into it. And then Cannon's all like, is someone there? And Gramps is all like, no, nobody's here. 
Gramps? Do we think Cannon can see Gramps then? Or at least Gramps thinks that she might be able to see him? She lived in Ganmahel for a long time. I feel like she could probably see him. I feel like Ganmahel might be a pretty nice place if you can't see ghosts, I'm kind of worried that she knows him. Mm. Ooh, I hadn't even thought of that. Mm. That he's like hiding because he doesn't want to expose himself? Yeah, Maybe or it was like her secret boyfriend. <gasps> or, or knows Scandal. of him because she's all tight with pretty boy. Yep. Maybe Pretty Boy knows about Gramps. Yo, for real though, what if Cannon and Gramps dated? And then he's just like, oh god, it's my ex again. This is awkward. Mm. That'd be funny. So they're talking about how Makoto's all missing, and then and then Urison pops up and is like, use Condor Phone! Condor Phone! You can call Onari from Condor Phone. Condor Phone can find them. We skip back to the fight that was happening in, was it a park? I'm going to say it was near an underpass. It's probably a bridge situation. A uh, Spectre has, in, in the meantime, somehow transformed into Nobunaga. Uh, there's purple fog everywhere. The knife Ganma is kind of kicking his butt. Literally throws Spectre into the air and knife Ganma floats around him and like slices him a bunch. He goes, slice the and fog. dice. Yeah. In the middle of the fog. It was not a good sitch for Spectre. And then Pretty Boy rocks up. And he necroms horde. And I just I just really seriously love his transformation. I really <laughs> it's do. So stupid. It's just that moment where he hits the first button and I just know because the only the next step is hitting the other button that's on his wrist. But I he has to like kill time. I think my favorite part is the voice. That's like the starting point. He goes, Stand by. And yeah. it's not a Japanese voice. No. It's an American voice that just goes stand by but he just like he pokes the side button and then he's gonna like do this hand flourish and wait a few seconds and then dink the top button dink you think there's a person outside of the camera range going okay hit the button you can hit it again now probably and then he punches the hell out of Spectre the straight heck Right out of him. Yep. Punchy punch. He knocks him down. Uh, Spectre detransforms. And then so does uh, Pretty Boy. He just drops his transformation. Because he's going to have a conversation. Yeah. It's, it's like, not a very good conversation. You're not going to let me down anymore. And then he like sticks the Necrom icon in Spectre's driver belt. And then forces him to transform. Literally, it's like he says possessed transform or something like that yeah. yeah uh specter's body gets kind of floated up into the air as the jacket comes around and gets on him yeah so it's clear that he's like unconscious but still moving i think it's really interesting because i've always thought of like transformations as a thing that you have to yell out and do so the idea that they can do possession in this kind of way so we cut to the temple entrance where Akari and Anari are running back in as Condor Phone leaves, leads Taco Time out of the building on his motorcycle. Like, they, they just miss each other. I don't know why Condor Phone doesn't know where they are. Or I guess they're looking for Makoto. Yeah, Condor Phone doesn't care about Anari and Akari right now. They, uh, they walk into Snapple HQ and in the... I think it's the bedroom where Makoto was staying... The I think it's Taco's room. Is it Taco's room? Future Sight is just reading a book on his bed, eating some snacks, looks very happy. And they're all like, hey, you can't do this. And then we get another vision of a future attack. Akari says she's going to go because Inari's like, but I just, and I didn't do so I don't well think we can do it without Taco time. And then Akari's all like, I'm going to show you the power of science. Yeah. She's very into science in this episode, and it's adorable. We're back at the bridge, the overpass. Cannon and Tago are looking around, and they find, like, Onari's staff thing. And then they find Spectre's phone in a puddle. Cobra phone was in the gutter. Yeah, it was really sad. Poor Cobra phone. He need to go live in some rice for a while. And then Pretty Boy shows up, and Cannon asks where Spectre is. And Pretty Boy's like, I don't know. And then Taco asks Pretty Boy why there's no war. In Ganma Hell. And he says, because it's a utopia. And then Canon, don't you agree? And Canon goes, yep. Totally is. It's a good time. And we cut to the next Ganma attack. 
this is in like a, I don't know, cafeteria, an outdoor eating area. It's part of a mall, maybe. I don't know. There's chairs and pillars and stairs. And an Ariana Kari roll up and save a woman in a red jacket from getting slashed. Akari is wearing protective gear? Yeah, she changed. Some some cobbled together I I will be safe because I have my rollerblading gear on. Yeah. She has okay, but the thing is she has like a helmet, like yellow tinted goggles. Yep. Like a chest plate. Yep. And like some shin guards. Yeah. And and she's changed to like a plaid jacket and skirt and pants. Yeah, the, she's the pants aren't plaid, but wearing, she's wearing some layers. Skirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, in case she gets knocked down, right? Like that's what happened to Onari. She she's being prepared. She can get knocked down, but she has to get back up again. They're never going to take her down. But she pulls out the anti Ganma gun, the glitter gun. Yeah, and what just like shoves a different module on it. Yeah, she's like, I got Shiranui plus. And then we cut back to Taco Time, who's getting a phone call from Condor Phone. And Onari's all like, we're at the new attack site, and there's a gun, and stuff is happening, and oh no. And at that moment, Akari fires the glitter gun, and it sends out like this particle ball that spins around the room, and then comes and hits Onari in the head, and knocks him out. Uh, When we cut back to where Taco Time is as well, Pretty Boy walks out from under wherever they're standing next to Cannon, and tells her, by the way, your brother's fine. It just kind of leaves. You could totally believe him. He's pretty boy. I mean, Canon, every time pretty boy has said anything to her, she's just very much, she trusts him. They seem to have a pretty sincere relationship, honestly. Maybe they dated too. Oh, dang! But maybe it ended well. Oh, dang! This relationship chart is going to get complicated real quick. Because I think maybe Gramps and pretty boy also dated... Oh, dang. It's just a bad scene all around. Gramps leaves relationships badly. Maybe Pretty Boy does not. Who knows? But how does Dead Dad fit into all of this? Look, you can find that all out if you just follow the spinoff series about Tiny Table Friends. They cover some of that. Wait, do they investigate the relationships of the group? You gotta have some drama in a detective series. Oh, dang. Maybe... Spider Lantern dated Pretty Boy. Whoa, 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 <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Yo. Uh, I think that was in the OVA. <laughs> I don't think they put that in the re- in the actual spinoff. Too hot for TV. We need to get back on track here. There's a track? So I think at this point, Pretty Boy's all like, your brother's fine? Yes. Just forget about it. It's, it's okay. And we cut back to Akari staring at a clock on the wall. She's like, that's not what time it is. And I have a wristwatch. And she looks different. different. She looks at her wristwatch. She realizes time has stopped. No, that there's a really strong magnetic field, so the clock on the wall doesn't work anymore. Yeah, that's why her gun missed. That was so bizarre. We get to find out Mr. Steampunk's actual name at this point. Igor. Yep. Master Igor, thanks to Jack Jackknife. And Mr. Steampunk... Super excited to find uh, another person who into science. Oh yeah, he's he's impressed by science lady. That someone in this realm has the power of critical thinking, and Akari's all like, "Of course, I'm a scientist," and Steampunk is all like, "In my world, we call this scotopology." Excuse me, say that <laughs> it again. Was scotopology, I think. Once more. Scotopology? Sure. I, I think. I, I didn't have enough time to write it I down. I didn't write it down either. I just like hearing you say it. <laughs> Scotopology. 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 The science of ghost magic. Scotopology. I like it. We take some liberties on this podcast, don't we? Some? <laughs> we don't apologize to no goats. I'm not afraid of no goats. <laughs> Goat busters. <laughs> Bustin' makes me feel good. No, that's still the same. Ghostin' Let's makes me feel bad, man. Goats make me feel bad? No, goats. Goat curry makes me feel good. I do like 
goat milk oh, in yeah. pastry. Oh, goat cheese. Oh. Oh, God. I feel like if you're having goat curry, you might need to give the goat an apology. No, no, no. Or That's not my responsibility. I did not go to school for five years to apologize to a goat. Did you go to school for five years for goat apology? No, for computer science. Hey, man, I pay taxes. I don't have to apologize. No goat. Fair enough. Goats don't pay taxes. I think dogs should vote. <laughs> I don't know what's got your goat. What would they vote for? More tax breaks for goats? Animals in general. So, Steampunk Man, the goat apologist, is all like, in my world, everything is uniform and homogenous and perfect. And here, everything is stupid and different. It's exactly what he sounded like. Yeah. Except in Japanese. No, no, that was plain English. Everything <laughs> here is stupid and different. You think variety is is awesome. We're actually just playing an audio track from the show currently. Uh, I'm just going to hit play again. And Akari's all like, oh. who are you? And he's all like, wait, wait, hit play. I'm a vast intelligence beyond compare. Future Sight shows up, walking down the stairs, and is all like, I can see the future. And Mr. Steampunk is like, yeah, let's test that. Yes, let's analyze it. The knife gamma goes to attack, and Akari gets in the way of Just like, the lady. body checks the lady out of the way, and gets knifed. Straight knifed. Yeah, and then the soul of Akari goes over to Steampunk Man. These are like, sacrificing oneself is foolishness. Yeah, that makes Tago Time pretty upset, since he's very much against all of these things. And also, kind of in love with Akari still, probably. Oh, maybe. I, hey, I don't know if he, I don't remember if he time. noticed. I can't, I still can't remember if he noticed that he had feelings for her. I don't know <laughs> if he noticed that he had feelings for her. I usually think Corey's right. Because she cause had the date tickets. She, she, she did. She's done a lot to but try and do this. Did he take her to the museum that time? Like right before he was going to die, he took her to the nuclear physics museum. But it was very much as a, I want to take you somewhere that you would enjoy and have a good memory of me before I go away kind of thing. As opposed to, uh, I might have feel I have feelings for you, and I want to let you know before I die. I mean, he's gonna die, so it's he can't really, you know, get too involved. Are you saying he's trying to save himself for some ghost ladies? Mm-hmm. Maybe Gramps. I hear he's available. How do you know that? He disappears all the time. He could be hooking up. He's got that ghost Tinder. He's in an open relationship. He has what now? Ghost Tinder. Tinder for ghosts. Swipe right for ghosts. Yeah. What What does swiping left do? You don't want to know. Ooh. You kind of ghost off. I haven't got there yet. You've never swiped left on ghost Tinder? No, I swipe right on ghost Tinder all the time. Have you not seen the ghosts that show up on ghost Tinder? So transparent. TBH, I was on Tinder at one point because I was hella curious. And I swiped left on everybody except one person, which turned out to be my friend. I mean, that's the reason I swiped right on him. Because I was just like, hey, look, we're both on Tinder. Ha, 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 ha. And then I deleted ain't, ain't, it. Ain't into that. No, I deleted that app. That app was terrifying. The cool thing about Tinder, though, is uh, because it has a GIF option, I could respond to creeps who would send me messages with a GIF of myself saying no. That made Tinder really enjoyable for a while. Not that GIF of, like, that hot dog cutter. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a good GIF. Should have used that gif. The banana slicer. Also good. So Anari walks, uh, jumps out, and pushes Taco Time out of the way. Because he's like, nope, I, I'm i gonna I'm gonna defend what Speechify. happened to Anari. And do the speech this time. You can't always do the speeches. Onari time. And he's all like, my training has totally paid off. I believe in myself. Let and me show you the additional fruits. He says additional fruits. But he means... I know what he means, but, but he, he still like, says it. He means like fruits of his labor, right? Yes, but who calls them additional fruits of my labor? You don't say it that way. It's weird. I'm going to call. I'm gonna show um, you my additional fruits. Yo, that's something from <laughs> Tinder for sure. Ghost Tinder. I don't want to see your additional fruits. 
Is this the is this the part where that thing happens? Yeah. 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 You want to talk about that? that? Yeah. Okay. So uh, Onara gets shot at. And then he does a really, really, really good, bad uh, recreation of that scene from The Matrix where Neo has to bend backwards and, like, avoid all the bullets. And the camera does this sweet, like, pan around. And, God, there were speed waves in the air from the bullets. I guess that's, like, the sound barrier breaking. Or it's just air turbulence. It was that. And then he fell over because he hadn't trained hard enough. Because his spine broke. Yeah, his spine yeah. broke. And then he fell and he went... There was like an x-ray close up on his lower back of his spine breaking. A cartoon x-ray. Yeah. Just straight up broken. And then he fell over and said, Ow, my back and my head. Like he didn't seem like his spine had just broken. He didn't seem that upset about it. Didn't seem crippled for life? No. He did not seem... I was going to say plagiarized. And I that's not what I meant. <laughs> paralyzed. <laughs> Both those things could be true. I was still talking and my brain was just chugging along for a second. I could feel it. Uh, Trying to figure out the word. I knew the word it wasn't, but he wasn't paralyzed or plagiarized. We don't know that. That ghost could have also plagiarized him. While this stuff was going on, Taco Time was just like at first really proud of Onari. He's like, yeah, you, you show him. I'm not going to help because you're doing great. And then he, when he fell over, he's like, <sighs> okay, you don't hurt my friends, you bad man. And then he just went straight for boost. Booster juice. He, he booster juiced. He fights Jack Jackknife. What a bad name. Good it's like God. a Gundam name. It is. It's still bad. Mr. Steampunk got rid of them souls out of his ball and people showed up around. Women. It, no, no. Ladies. Yeah, not not people. Right. I'm <laughs> Women. <laughs> They're not people. <laughs> They're women. Uh, no, specifically what? though, it was like ten women who formed a circle around it, Booster Juice, who all had red somewhere on their person. One had a red sweater. One had a red umbrella. One had a red bag. One had red shoes. One was named Akari, well, and they're all like, yeah, soul whispering, "Help me, save me!" At Taco, all as trying they crowd to. around him and like Akari touch is him. strangling him. T- they're touch they're him. all trying to kind of. The car is the only one really succeeding. And steampunks are like, these souls cut from their bodies are now my puppets. Future Sight Lady basically comes over and then like sends Taco her icon. Yeah, Taco's all like, I want to protect all of these souls of these people. And Future Sight's all like, leave it to me, and turns into the Himiko icon. Yeah, the, the icon the pops out of her one. body. And, and she yeah. faints, I think. It pink. Yeah. Hey, guess what? It's a lady icon, which means it's pink. It's the only lady icon. It's the likely. only pink icon. That's nice. We don't need another blue one or white one. Or yellow one. But or purple. Why does it have or to brown. be? Or brown. Well, we definitely don't need another brown one. Why does it have to be pink if it's a lady? Maybe it's Sakura petals again. Uh, I mean, it is, but... Because she's very old. She's not... She's not like a light pink, like a sacro petal thing. She's like hella pink. Do you remember Canon when Canon was an icon? Pink, white with pink light. Yeah, she was. She had a little bit of light pink on her. She. I always saw her more as a kind of a white transparent. Yeah, I saw her as pink because she's she not special eye. enough to have real color. That's fair. But okay, 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 okay. Wait. So, Taco transforms using this pink icon, right? Yes. yes. Cool. Long, trenchy pink jacket, some like gold shoulder situation. Yeah, I'm not sure what those are. No, I mean, it was kind of a basic jacket. It was like mostly just a pink trench with some like. He's got a crown? Yeah, he has a gold crown. Some weird eyebrows. And like flower petal eyes on his mask. Here's the thing that bothered me. He suddenly got. Now, you guys said graceful. Yep. He's he's spinning and twirling the sword. That's, and that's what they're trying to convey. His posture and his mannerisms got super femme. Yeah. Just because he put on this jacket. And my problem was, instead of being this sweet, badass hero, it was just glitter. It was literally pink glitter and sparkles and spin moves and pointed feet. And it was very, very, very feminine. And he takes Jack Jack Knife. 
to the pink cloud zone full of glitter and sparkles and flowers and destroys him. I mean, when I think about it, the only other character, the only other hero icon that I've seen him use where he has very specific body gestures is Goemon. Otherwise, it's mostly just kind of whatever he's doing. Like, yeah, it doesn't so feel like he's... I don't really understand why the one, like, female one needed to be all feminine. I think Beethoven had, like, special arm flourishes and stuff. Well, that was more conducting, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. a thing. But this was, like, his entire body, all of his mannerisms and everything was different. Mm-hmm. Which I wasn't a super fan of. I just wanted him to be badass while representing a female. Instead of... Girly. Yeah. Is I I don't know if I'm conveying this properly, but anyways, I had, I, I I had trouble with that. Um I also dislike I really I like his booster juice form on its own, but I don't like it with any of the jackets. It's awful with all of the jackets. Now we've got a red and a pink together. Like a very, very red. Stupid. It was very clashy. I could see how people would be like, Oh, red and pink, that sounds great. No no no. These two shades of those two colors clashed very badly. Anyways, Taco won. That was pretty cool. He found Future Sight on the ground. She woke up. Okay. She pulled out a business card. Yep. For her. For the Himiko study group. Yep. She's where the she's VP. the vice president. She's the vice president. She then pulls out a tiny boost taco and a tiny... Another common rider. Yeah, another common rider. And just hands them over and is like, hey, these are for you. You're going to be the legend soon. So I I just have this on me. I think she's referring to the other common Rider that she hands to Onari. She's all like, you're going to meet probably this dude eventually soon. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's, it's very much a marketing moment, but I don't... It doesn't make sense why she has them. It made sense earlier when Akari had, like, little pins and stickers or whatever. Because at least she knows what a common writer should look like. I think she has them because she can see the future. Hey, that's actually pretty smart. Which is probably what her connection to Himiko is. Yep. Mm. Yep, that makes a lot of sense now. So it's she just knew to buy them from Her, her connection to Himiko is that she could see the future and not that she was the VP of the Himiko study group. Why would you be the VP of the Himiko study group if you couldn't see the future? That's true. Maybe she's not even the VP. She just made those cards because she knew at one point in time she would become the VP. Oh. oh. She should really... Oh, I thought you were going to say that she made this card so that she could pretend to be part of a study group at this point. Not, no, not so that she could just become the VP. She just knew, so she preemptively made the cards. Yeah, it saves you a lot of time if you just know these things in advance. Onari and Akari are fighting. Of course. As per usual. And Newton flies off again. Again. Really, really doesn't seem to like Himiko at all. Because the Himiko icon's like, those two are interesting. And Tacos are like, yes, they are. And then we end with Pretty Boy and Necrom just watching. Creepily. Yeah, like, Tacos running away, and you can see him reflected in Necrom's mask. I think so, like, foreshadowing. We're going to need They're to They're going have... to fight. I think we're going to need to have a uh, a nickname for Spectre Necrom. Because it's going to get confusing Spec-rom. quick. Specrom. Ooh. Obviously. Okay. It's the spec variety of Crom. It's not as good as regular Necrom. But it's Specrom. It's special. Yeah. Special Crom. Special Crom. Spec Crom. Spectre Crom. Get God. Special Crom. Spectre Cromwell. <laughs> now you're getting too fancy. Yo. Mr. Spectre Cromwell Esquire. Look, I don't I don't yeah, the have other, the other one could be uh Nexus Cromwell. Look, I don't I don't have a tie to wear to this conversation that we're having about the fancy Cromwell. I can't can't do this. As long as you're wearing pants, it's fine. God damn it. Heather, put your pants back on. Fine. We can find you a tie. Hey, this was an interesting episode. I felt like not a lot happened. Yeah, not a lot happened. No, we got a new pretty... we got a new icon a bit of exposition yeah a lot of just we need to move things along yes we do we need to move things along (laughs) yeah like we kind of caught a little bit of uh we got a bit of insecurity from onari and some science advancement in the vulnerability of ganma and an introduction to a new bad guy who doesn't look like he's necessarily directly related to pretty boy no he's, he's from ganma hell but i don't think they're buddies they might be rivals yeah, like they like maybe 
Steampunk is part of a science division of something, and then Pretty Boy is just royalty. I mean, Steampunk might work for his brother. His brother still seems to be the higher-up villain that we're just not getting a lot of stuff in. Hmm. Hey, thanks for listening to the episode. You can follow us on Twitter. It's at Ghostwatch2016. You can follow us on YouTube. Subscribe on YouTube. It's Ghostwatch2016. You can go to our Instagram account. No, it doesn't exist. Goat Watch. Goat Watch. Goat Busters. 2K16. No, that's not real. Um, You can subscribe to us on iTunes, right? Yep. And that's it. We have a website. Oh, we have a website. Yeah, it's ghostwatch2016.xyz or Z if you're American. Goat apology to everyone. Don't apologize to the I'm goats. not apologizing. I'm telling them where they should take some classes. What? For goat apology. No. What? We, we, we are, are not they, offering are they off- these. These are, are not official classes. No, we are not. These are not official website? classes. Do I have to have like a sign up form? No. <laughs> this is not part of the newsletter. <laughs> Do we have a newsletter? You didn't know about the newsletter? No. Really? You're not signed up for the newsletter? You no. write the newsletter. No. That's why it hasn't gone out in like three months. <laughs> <laughs> or ever. <laughs> okay, we'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.